Farmers in Madagascar today face two serious problems, poverty and environmental degradation. Their home, Madagascar, has one of the most unique ecosystems on the planet. Over 80% of its plant and animal species are found nowhere else in the world, and much of this diversity is in danger of destruction. This has made the island a big target for conservationists. Madagascar also has a very high poverty rate, and has attracted international efforts to improve its people's standard of living. In spite of all these environmental and economic efforts, though, over 75% of people on Madagascar still live in poverty, and environmental destruction continues at an unsustainable rate. So why is this? A lot of people blame rural farmers for clearing land for agriculture and not improving their lives, but most of the real problem has to do with conflicting priorities between development and conservation, and a lack of opportunity for rural farmers to help determine their own future. As farmers, the rural people who make up the majority of Madagascar's population rely on resources from the area around them to survive and grow. Often though, conservation agencies working with the government carve out large environmentally protected areas, keeping rural villagers from taking advantage of their local resources. This has the unintended side effect of trapping rural farmers no longer able to support themselves in poverty, sacrificing people for the environment. Organizations often try to encourage farmers to shift into tourism or other industries, but rural people often don't have the right skills, and tourist industry opportunities on Madagascar are limited. Encouraging ecotourism can even backfire by making it illegal for villagers to farm near the tourist area. Through all of this, the opinions of the farmers affected by conservation and development policies are largely ignored, and this causes big problems. Using fire to clear farmland, for example, often has clear benefits that government and conservation officials have overlooked, but they try to force people to stop doing it. Organizations also dodge the issue that a lot of Madagascar's environmental damage is due to large-scale export farming and mining, neither of which is done by the poor rural farmers who receive most of the blame. Things like these drive programs and local people into conflict and act as a barrier keeping conservation and development programs from having the impact that they need to. Change is important, but maybe it's time for international developers and conservationists to stop trampling rural farmers and instead start to really listen.